been under his belt the American tie but a full grid and now you see the length just how long that long main straight is from uh, the pit lane and from high above on the drone but away we go then and the race is underway and somebody moved very quickly indeed I hopefully not too quickly but out of the heat haze they come and it's the run towards that first corner and it is the 27 of Patrick Woods Toth who's got a very good start but doesn't take the lead just slots into second place there I think or maybe third but a good clean start Michael Costello looking to hold off the field 27, that is Patrick Woods Toth. He's right there. Just trying to chase down the number 30, Lewis Hodgson, who made a better start, in fact. And now side by side stuff as one of the uh, Alex Burr has got an amazing start already. Yeah, I was about to say, it was I, I got lost on my my Jay Howard. It's a Jay Howard car that leads, but yeah, Alex Burr got a good, good start as they head out of turn four and five, and it is the Jay Howard development car that leads the way. Not sure out of how many there are, it is which car at the moment. I'm thinking it's Michael Costello. It should be Michael Costello. Yeah. And as they head out of six and down to the back and to the S's for the first time. Oh, Alex Murray's getting it. Oh, he's on it. Whoa! Oh, a little sideways. Wow, and oh, damage wow. one of the rear casings coming off the engine there. I'm not sure to which car. But we'll find out in a moment, but that could easily bring out the safety car if it stays on track. They've all got through there. Uh, and as they dive into 13 and up towards the Mission Foods corner for the first time, all sorts of drama here. But the race is led by Michael Costello leading the way after the first lap and starting to inch away from the rest of the field. Good start then from Costello. They cross the line, the opening lap, a 151. Those lap times will drop. Everybody jostling for position because this is one of the overtaking places. Lockhart, Jimmy Lockhart up to second place. But Berg's the man on the move up to fifth place. And you know this kid, right? Yes, yes, I know. Uh, yeah, he's uh, he's done well last season. Um, he's showing terrific speed this year. And oh, here, here he comes. Yep. Yeah, he's on it. You can't miss him in that pink helmet, can you? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I love the pink helmet. He's definitely unique in that way. Oh, here we go. Uh, Lockhart going for the lead now. Jimmy Lockhart, who won the second race and now leading the race. He got ahead of Costello in a nice infield move there. So it is Lockhart now moving into the lead. 22 minutes to go. Hodgson still third. Woods Toth drops to uh, fourth place. The Canadian Berg is the man we've been watching. He just got past the man from Houston, Texas, uh, Daniel Carra, who was up here a moment ago uh, doing some commentary with us. Then it's the Australian Lacey. Sherlock is eighth for Kiwi Crosslink Motorsport. Likewise, Kleck in ninth. Bennett is 10th at the moment. And watch for Mosman to come out. Yeah, well, that was an amazing move by Lockhart. I think in turn four, there's a... Oh, wow. well, I'll let you see it again. Well, while this action is going, but well, have another look at it. What do you think, Oliver? So I think uh, that's a perfect move, holding the inside. He was on the outside of turn three, went on the inside of turn four. So that, that move is already done before it happened. How easy are these cars? And I say easy because they're all hard, but how, I mean, you're very close quarters. There's Daniel Cara on the inside there, Berg just ahead, and the 31 of Titus Sherlock. They are wheel to wheel, but how, how comfortable uh, do you feel racing at these close quarters? I mean, you've all done carts, I know. So, you know, are you fine with, with Slicks of Wins being these close? Oh, um, I love it. Uh, rubbing is racing. These are right. the, the these cars are amazing, especially F4 because um, the cars are so close at a, uh, at most of the part of the track. So um, I think that when you're running close with other cars, it's it's always exciting um, because because um, you know they they are the they're, they're really talented guys and they uh, they want they want to get a shot at every turn they can. Nice move by Sherlock. Titus Sherlock making the move on Berg and gets it done. Daniel Cara now having a sniff himself. This is really good racing. Four of them involved, including the number 16 of JC, Jesse Lacey, the Australian. So this is fantastic. We've got a six-way battle here in the midfield. And it starts with Berg, Sherlock, Cara, Lacey, and just behind Clegg and Mosman in the top ten. Alex Berg is looking really impressive now. He's he's got great great race pace, so I think that he can move up uh, further and further. Yeah, fifth at the moment, and like you say, experience starting to show here. 
Oh, there's oh, the damage wow. car. That's one of the uh, Jay Howard development cars, and that's had its uh, rear end ripped off. And if the driver's okay. He's out of the car, but uh, he's just putting the thumbs up and can't see the number, but the back end of that car is absolutely ripped off. Wow. Now, don't know if that's the one that had the engine cover go off or it's a different incident. I've got a feeling it's a different incident because there was damage to the rear suspension. Yeah, I think that's a crash between a couple of cars. Another of those cars is car 17. That's tight Durst. Let's take a look at it, Oliver, and we'll see it for the first time now, but I'll let you judge it for what we see. Here we go. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, th I think that um, he, he ran out of road. Someone might have squeezed him out. Right. Um, may maybe they were in their blind spot. So, yeah, that, that's always tough when you get squeezed out because once you get on the grass, once you drop those wheels on the grass, it's 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 praying th they're on. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's Gatorsville out there. You don't want to be out on the grass here at uh, Louisiana. <laughs> yeah. Now, I always think this is a hard time for a racing driver. I've often said this. Um, Tell me what happens now when you you slow right down, you've done three or four laps, your adrenaline's been flowing, and then you have to kind of regroup, don't you? Yeah, no, the, the, it, it's, it is nice in a way to uh, slow the pace down and regroup because you get to analyze uh, what you've been doing in these past laps and what you can, uh, the weaknesses of the drivers ahead of you, the mistakes they might have done in the earlier laps. So, so yeah, I think the slow down lap really gives you uh, time to settle down and just think about what you're gonna do in the, uh, once the safety car goes back in. So we're looking at high above the main part of the circuit here at NOLA, and we're under caution. Lockhart, Jimmy Lockhart, in one race two, leading the way. Uh, the race one winner, Bennett, down in 11th at the moment. And Mosman just inside the top 10. Caro was in that battle that we were watching. And here is that group led by Berg. Sherlock got into it as well. But now, I mean, do you start thinking about the restart as you're going around? I mean, what, I mean are you talking to your engineer? What do, what do you go through in terms of systems, systems check? So, um, well, before the restart, you want to be right on the right on the tail of the other car. If you, if you don't have a good restart, then uh, you might fall back too quick because during the last turn, once once you start accelerating, that's around uh, the last turn of the carousel going onto the main straight. So I think that you want to prepare uh, right on the last few turns before the carousel. You want to be right along the gearbox, but not not too not too close because you know the front car can't break, and then you can have a a wing a wing damage. And yeah, I think it's I think it's very crucial the restarts. Um, yeah, no, you, you really have to be prepared. You have to be ready at all times because some some drivers may not know uh, that the safety car is coming in. Mm -hmm. It might, might not be uh, focused and see that. So, yeah, you really have to be dialed in uh, r right along the safety car lap. Well, you're listening to Oliver Wessling, who's joined me here in the booth for this F4 race. But we're going to take a short break while we're under caution, and we'll get back to the action from NOLA right after this. The Mission Foods Atlanta Speed Tour returns to Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta March 24th through the 26th. Featuring the Trans Am Series presented by Pirelli, the Sports Car Vintage Racing Association, International GT. Saturday, take part in the Haggerty Cars and Caffeine Car Show with Parade Labs. You do not want to miss the Mission Foods Atlanta Speed Tour March 24th through the 26th. Advanced ticket discounts and camping is available. For tickets, simply go to speedtour.net. Welcome back. As you can see, we're under caution. The Honda Civic, uh, and interestingly enough, uh, if you're wondering why we have a Honda Civic, well, all the engines that you're looking at in the back of these F4 cars are Honda Civic R engines, and in FR, the one that Oliver Westling races in, uh, we have the Honda Civic R, but with the turbo charge. So a big, heavy presence from Honda, and uh, we welcome them. Uh, to the series as they do and they're offering big prize money if you can win this series you will get an entry into the FR series and 25,000 for your work so it's well worth trying to win out and if you are in Oliver's position Oliver Westling the man is alongside me you could be going for a chance to go into the super formula in Japan with a win in FR so Honda has put some enticing prizes for these young men and women out there. And this is the whole point, though. We uh, 
want to make sure as an FIA championship these guys get a chance of winning super license points because they all want to get into Formula One but there are only 20 cars of course and therefore sometimes you have to accept that uh, professionally racing cars Oliver I haven't asked you what's your ambition where do you want to be um, I want to be a Formula One champion. Uh, my dream is to win this championship in FR to get the scholarship um, going to Japan to race Super Formula. I think we have a good shot at it this year. Um, there's been some struggles in this weekend, but um, I'm definitely a top top three car, and I think we can easily fight throughout the season to uh, make that happen. Well, Sweden has got a good history. Uh, we've got the likes of Stefan Johansson who went to Formula One, obviously Marcus Ericsson, uh, and both of them still involved, of course, Johansson managing drivers now, including Scott Dixon, and of course, Marcus Ericsson doing a hell of a job uh, now in IndyCar racing. And uh, that's the beauty of being in your position, is that yes, it's great to have that goal, and uh, I still got to play center forward for England up front, <laughs> um, uh, but Harry Kane's there at the moment. So, you know, yeah. we've, all, we've all got our dreams, but I'm, I'm not mocking yours by any means. Uh, I hope you make it, but it is tough. But the beauty of motor racing at the moment is there are options either side, and sometimes, like Marcus, you could make it all the way to Formula One, and then the opportunity comes somewhere else, and then you take it. Right. No, yeah, I, th I think IndyCar is a great, great series. Um, Formula One is not the only option. Um, if, you, if you're a driver and you love car racing, it, you're going to have you're gonna have a great time in uh, either series, but Formula One is the tip top of the iceberg, and I think that Formula One will be an amazing achievement if you end up to be a Formula One champion. Well, Sweden, well known for its uh, rally car drivers, and they love their racing in Sweden. Yes, it's cold in the winter, I'll give you that, but they love their racing, I can assure you. Yes, sir. And we've had some great Swedes and Danes uh, come to, and of course, Finns, to uh, race around the world, and we welcome you, Oliver Westlink, here as we're about to go starting racing again. And Lockhart, Jimmy Lockhart, will lead this massive field to the race start again and this is an important part of the race you've got to get away well from the start but also if you're the man chasing you've got to make it happen now Costello eyeing his way through T Woods Toff in the uh, 30 and the 27 excuse me right there in the middle Hodgson's in the middle there too everybody coming into Berg now in fifth place trying to make it up another spot oh it's nip and tuck oh, as they wow, come yeah, into yeah. three but it is Jimmy Lockhart still leading oh, just about one of the... Uh, well, that was Costello going wide, but just gets back in. He got lucky there, to be honest, because he could have got hung out to dry. He's still in third at the moment. I'm really impressed by Jimmy Lockhart's race pace. He's uh, he's stretching it from the beginning, so it's a good sight to see. Really good, yeah. Jimmy Lockhart leading the way at the moment. Now, trying to get away from this group of chasing. And this is an important lap because if you can break it in this opening lap with everybody else getting up to speed and having their own battles, as Berg is doing there right in the middle of your shot, in what, sixth place now? Eleven minutes to go, so not a lot of time as they dive into turn 13. And you can see some overtakes being, overtake, being done and being... Uh, executed nicely and if you don't get it done here coming into that 13 then it's really hard to do anything else around the outside like they're trying here a couple of them and on to the main straight again and this front shot really shows you just how long this straight is but Lockhart in continuing to lead and continuing to extend that lead. Oh, wow. The gap, 0.9, but the battle are really on now between Costello and Hodson. That was a good move by Costello. Yeah, really good. Costello back up to second place now, but oh, here, here comes Hodson again. As they got, he's gonna have the line going into three at Bennett's, he's got it. Can he hold it? He does send Costello high and wide, but last time Costello came back and he's doing the same again this time. Meanwhile, the 31 of Sherlock, Titus Sherlock, coming into the battle. Yeah, Costello's being pressed. This is excellent stuff. Uh, I mean, uh, I went to the driver briefing the other day and listened to Scott Goodyear tell everybody to keep it clean, keep your nose clean. You've got to finish the race. 
You're investing a lot of money to go racing. You want to be the best. But being the best does not mean you get into an accident and ruin your weekend. I know this is the last race of the weekend, but every race counts for points. And more importantly, when people are looking at drivers for the future, they want to see them race clean, but race hard. I think it's great with these F4 cars. The slipstream is so powerful in these cars. So when you're on the straightaway, you're going to get a massive, massive uh, slipstream. And uh, I think in the F4 cars, they're much easier to overtake in the F4 cars because somehow the slipstream isn't very strong in the F4 car. Yeah, interesting enough, you get more aero wash, but uh, you don't get as much of a slipstream. I think these smaller cars are kind of like more suited, a bit like Miata racing, to uh, slipstream racing in groups. Uh, and you could just slingshot out just exactly like you're seeing how they're weaving from side to side. It's not because they're lost, it's because they're trying to <laughs> avoid being followed, quite literally. And Hodson doing a good job in second place. But through comes the 27, Woods Toff, nicely done, into third place behind Costello now. Very clean. Nice move. Berg still there in the top six. That is Lacey. Mostman moving up. He's gone from 10th to 8th position. Car has dropped to 10th. And Juanillo is in what? Uh, ninth position, the man from Fort Lauderdale in Florida. So the race starting to settle down. And if anything, Lockhart pulling away. The gap 1.6 seconds now. Where, where do you start to feel comfortable? Uh, about two seconds, you go, okay, I got, I got, I got some control here. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, you want to be as, uh, like, you want to be uh, pushing, but um, I think that, yeah, just around two seconds, or yeah, it could, you should start feeling comfortable. Yeah, two seconds though, in a race like this could be gone in, in a matter of moments. So yeah, I don't think you're ever too comfortable. Right. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, there you go. Yeah, this racetrack, uh, there's no, there's no comfort, uh, comfort riding. Um, you're 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 jumping around with the car at all moments except the straightaway. So I think that it's it's a little different from riding in a limousine. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. So here we go then. Looking at the times, looking further down the charts, and looking at who's going where. Anna Greenmeyer into the top 20, just behind Christopher Paris uh, at the moment. Paris, and then Lando Matriano Lim in 18th position. Benavites in 17th. Maddie Auster girl you mentioned earlier she's the highest female at the moment in 16th position and then she's just behind Eric Wisineski who is coming to the season for the first time this year as we've got more battles going on as once again it involves Hodgson in the 30 in the middle of your shot there behind him Woodstock of Canada from Quebec I think the battle between Costello and uh, Hodgson it, it's um it's slowing them down a little bit because yeah. Lockhart is seeming to get away. Well, Lockhart's put in some excellent laps in the last few laps, and uh, his last lap, a 143.9, so he's on a much better pace. Everybody else in the 44s. There is one other car, that's Daniel Cara in the 143s, but there he is on the outside in the all yellow there, the Brazilian colors on the car. The man from Houston, Texas, and Brazil, or via Brazil, just like Oliver's from via Sweden. There's the casing that we were talking about. It yes, is sir. the number 30, yeah. So it was Lewis Hodgson who lost the uh, casing on the first lap by the looks of things. wonder how that happened. I know. You'd think the, the engineer's going to get, or well, somebody's going to get in trouble for not doing that up properly. Oh, well. So Lockhart continued to dominate here. 2.4 seconds he's now got on the chasing pack. But that's just that. A chasing pack of Hodgson, Costello, Woods, Toth, and Berg. And Sherlock also involved in that. Mosman up to seventh now. He's come into play as Lacey drops to eighth. So this little battle here between uh, third and eighth position is both a great battle, but also helping Lockhart move ahead and move away. And you can see the gap now as we look at the main straight. You can see where the leader is. He is absolutely pulverizing the competition here. Yeah, that's a big of a stretch. Oh, yeah, here we got three some seconds weaving. Down. Now we got some weaving on the straight. Are we going to get some overtakes? Costello trying to defend. He just about holds off Woods top then. Now Berg on the on the stripe now, on the charge now. Mosman ahead of him. But round the outside, surely not. He's going to give it a go. Maybe give it a little over under. <laughs> yeah, maybe do the switch back. Here he goes. But uh, he's not, well, he might. So Alex Berg makes the move. But unfortunately, the fourth corner is a right-hander, and he has to slot back into place. 
Good racing, though. Yeah, very clean. And do you find as the season goes on, your racecraft gets better, you get more used to what the car's going to do underneath you, and when you can catch a moment where it's going to get out of, out of shape, uh, yep. and you're just more proficient with it? Yeah, I think the racecraft uh, race definitely increases. Um, the, the more the more uh, race time you have, uh, the more you're going to learn from what other drivers are doing and how your car is handling. So yeah, it, it definitely your racecraft is definitely increasing the more you race. And um, yeah, when, when you get uh, when you get so many races in the season, it, you, you definitely develop uh, as a driver. Now there's a yellow flag waving there in 13. I wonder if that is a caution coming out. Yeah, they have slowed down, so I think we could be seeing a caution here with four minutes to go, and that is the reason why. Yep, uh, it's uh, Maddie Oust, the female driver, uh, coming back for a second year for Crosslink Kiwi. Had a chat with her at lunch the other day, enjoying her racing. She's from Colorado. Oh, excuse me, she's from Dallas, Texas. What am I talking about? Yeah, she might have had an engine issue. I don't see that she went off in a bad place. Now, the question is, can they clear it up in time? They've got a digger out there or a crane out there very quickly indeed. Uh, and now Jimmy Lockhart is going, please finish this race. <laughs> yeah. Whereas Michael Costello is going, right, I need to give Jay Howard a win here for the weekend. Yeah, Costello is slowly preparing. Good effort by Frankie Moseman. He's come back to fifth place, dropping Berg back to six, uh, and Daniel Cara up to seventh now. So it could be a really good or interesting restart if we get one. Where do you like to race? You've got a big season ahead of you, uh, lots of different tracks. Where, where's a good one for you? I think that VIR, Virginia, is yeah. my strong track. Yeah, I, I, I love going through those S's and the chicanes. Um, it's one of the best feelings because you are flat out even in that far cars uh, through those uh, turns. So yeah, I, th I think that Virginia has a lot of high speed corners and, and mid speed. Um, yeah, Coda is another great one. Uh, Circuit of the Americas is a great car for the FR Americas. But I do think that it is a little too big for an F4 car, but the F4 cars do great there always. Yeah, we've had some great racing over the years there. It looked like another car stuck out on track uh, just out of turn four, by the looks of it, uh, or going into turn four. Uh, Oliver's got to go. He's got to go and uh, get into his car. So we wish Oliver Westling watch out for the number one car. It's the blue, and it is, yeah. Oh, wow, it's a nasty moment. So thank you, Oliver, for coming in here. And it is car number seven that's stuck out on track. So another incident, not the one that we thought of. And we wish Westling. Uh, some good luck in the next race and unfortunately this car is not going anywhere and it's going to get uh, yanked out of that's Eric Wisanowski who's only in his first weekend he was a development driver last year so he did a bit of SVRA he was too young to do the series uh, so you have to be 15 and uh, he was just a little too young so uh, he's now in the championship but has been involved in an incident of some sort and uh, it was parked up there so whether they get him out of the way it could mean that we finish under caution here but uh, my thanks to Oliver uh, we wish him well in his race uh, watch out for the man from Emerald Hills California in the number one Jensen car the blue and blue light blue and dark blue car we'll see in action very soon So what can Jimmy Lockhart do at this restart? Or will he need to do one, I wonder? The guys are usually pretty proficient here, and Scott Goodyear will make the call as to when the safety car can come off, but certainly not now. And they'll have to do at least another lap, but the clock ticks down, and my fear is that this will finish under caution. But remember, the this is basically high school for <laughs> high school Age kids, really, but no, this is high school of motor racing. This is where you learn your trade, you learn what motor racing is all about, and if you do make it to Indy and you do make it to Formula One, uh, these are the kind of cars, although they're much smaller, these ones, but you'll be going to be dra driving similar sort of cars with similar sort of technology, with engineers, with data, uh, with tires that uh, need to stay warm, with wings that need to get you downforce. 
So the basics are right here. This is your intro to motor racing, if you will. Karting is the first step. Formula 4 is the second step. And I mentioned this early this morning. What you're looking at now is the future of the sport. Uh, and while all of them can't go to the dizzy heights and make it all the way, this is where Lando Norris started, in F4 in England. And there are F4 championships all around the world. And uh, it's a great starting point. And from there, you can go up to Formula Regional, which is the F3 class. And from there, it spreads right out because you have several different international Formula 3 class championship and uh, Formula Regional championships. And if you can make it through there, just as Hunter Yaney did from the United States, then you can make it to the FIA, F3. Hunter Yaney going from F4 here in the States into FR and then on to FIA F3. Another route would be like Raul Hyman. Starting out in single seaters, he made it up to FR. Had to take a couple of years off during COVID and then came back and dominated in FR last year. And the English driver, born in South Africa, is now racing with a Honda team in Super Formula, which is, again, one step away from Formula One. So this is where it all begins. But if you get it right, in a matter of just a couple of years, you can be at the dizzy heights of potentially earning a living out of motor racing, if not being a huge success, and finding your way onto the fabled F1 grid. Now, the question is, are we gonna get restarted? Just a reminder, Jimmy Lockhart leading this race at the moment, under caution in the Velocity Velocity Racing Development Honda. Michael Costello behind him in the J. Howard Development car. Patrick Woods Toth just behind him, the Canadian in the Crosslink Kiwi Motorsport Honda. Crosslink Kiwi, the most successful team here. Gary Orton, Tina Larson running teams both here in America and in New Zealand and from their base in Nelson. Zealand and their American base here in Dallas, Texas. You'll have heard some of the drivers talking about going to Crescent and testing. They are based right by the Crescent Circuit just outside Dallas, Texas. And they've had a huge success of bringing young drivers and making them into young stars of the future, no question about it. This then the final lap and as we expected it's going to finish under caution and sure enough there is the checkered flag. But that doesn't mean it's bad news for Jimmy Lockhart because that means it's a double win for him and he's going to lead the championship after Nola. So it's a win for Jimmy Lockhart, his second of the weekend for Velocity Racing Development in Kiwi. And Michael Costello for Jay Howard takes second place and Patrick Woods top takes third. Hodgson is fourth. Mosman, Frankie Mosman is fifth. Alex Berg is sixth and Daniel Cara seventh. Further down, Jesse Lacey of Australia, eighth. Kakai Huberano is in ninth position, and Titus Sherlock drops down to tenth after being embroiled in a accident of some sort. But well done to Jimmy Lockhart. That's a great result for the American Aussie. And one that, uh, all right, he did it uh, without racing over the line at speed, but it won't matter to him at all great result and it's been a good weekend for him so as Jimmy Lockhart takes the victory we'll take a look at the highlights from that final race of F4 for the weekend we got off to a good start. Michael Costello trying to defend his position at the front. Casings coming off. And then some good battles. Jimmy Lockhart making this move to take the lead away from Costello. And then safety cars came out. One damaged car there going off onto the grass at the restart once again. Hodson defending. Costello getting into the lead. And back came Hodson. Costello going wide. Matty Oust going off, and so too 